Well, good evening and welcome to the Hallie Diet webinar on Joyful Womenhood, How Hormone Balancing Can Lead to Peace, Well-Being, and Vitality. And this is an exciting presentation um, that Dr. Donaldson has put together for us. We can't wait to, to get to that. Um, before we do, we just want to um, share with you that you can ask questions throughout the presentation over there on the chat line. We'll um, collect all those questions and then uh, ask Dr. Donaldson for um, his opinion on those at, at the end after his presentation. So feel free to go ahead and just leave us your questions. Additionally, um, after the Q&A, we'll have a drawing for three um, lucky winners who will receive three months supply of Luminology product, which is a um, product that Hallelujah Diet has created and um, people are seeing some great results from. So we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end as well. So hang on. And um, those are, uh, that are online with us at the end will receive that. Well, before I introduce Dr. Donaldson, I'd just like to open us in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this um, opportunity to, to share this information, Lord. We pray that you'll um, bless the presentation, um, be with Dr. Donaldson as he presents, and give him the words, Lord. Pray for um, smooth technology this evening and that there's no interruptions and the information goes out without any um, um, hindrance. We pray that we honor you in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, Dr. Donaldson's been with the Hallia Diet since 1998 and um, has been our lead researcher working on um, validating the, the information and the, pr and the process that the Hallia Diet walks through as well as the products. And he's been extremely instrumental in validation of product um, to make sure that the products that um, how a diet puts out are the very best and have the um, greatest opportunity for giving people the, the best results he, they can. He's um, one of the premier leaders in the subject of enzyme and whole food nutrition and been called on by many experts to um, share his knowledge in that area. And he's also been published. He's um, had about a dozen different um, papers that have been published in peer-reviewed documents, and so he's he's well respected, and we it's been a real um, honor to have him on our team for all these years, and so he's got a great presentation on how to help um, balancing the hormones. And um, Dr. Donaldson, I'll just turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Paul. Hope you all can hear me now tonight. It's a little bit of a with some trepidation that I. I want to talk to all you women here about how to balance hormones, since I'm not one of you exactly. But we'll go forward here and and see what we can do here to help you out. So one of the first questions is, what does normal hormone balance look like through your menstruation years? You know, it changes later on here, but we have to start with the baseline in a sense. So just looking at that, here's just a a little chart of the hormones as you see. There's four different hormones that come into play here with the follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and then estrogen and progesterone. And it's kind of important to see how those rise and fall through a normal monthly cycle, and you've all experienced it, but just to see how those flow together and see what changes afterwards, what's different. So initially here, this is in the pituitary hormones. As the follicle is stimulated, you have the follicle stimulating hormone it starts to develop and it it causes an increase in estrogen in the ovarian hormones. It will start to put out more estrogen from the follicle, giving a rise to the luteinizing hormone at the time of ovulation, at about 14 days or so, maybe a little before that. After ovulation, that follicle stays open. It's called the corpus luteum. And that's very important because down here, the progesterone rise that you see comes from the corpus luteum. And the estrogen also is produced by that in the, the luteal phase of your cycle. So this is what normally happens. And then if no, if no fertilization occurs, then there's no human chorionic gonadotropin produced that sustains the, the life of that corpus luteum. And then estrogen and progesterone levels fall off that are produced by that and things cycle through and you get the, the cleansing, the monthly flow, there are a hundred different names for it. But that goes through and you start over again. The low estrogen levels again allow the follicle stimulating hormone to be produced. 
and you go through the cycle again. You have the follicle being developed here. It starts to produce estrogen again, which leads to luteinizing hormone, ovulation, and then the corpus luteum produces progesterone and estrogen. So that happens month after month. Okay? That's what happens normally. Before we go too far, I just want to get an idea here and a first question and just have an idea of really who, who you are here. So if you want to fill this out, there's a couple for guys here, but you know, not very many of us on the call probably. So just go ahead and click the, the age slot that you're in there. I'll give a couple minutes to do that. So here's what we're thinking about that. We're going to look at, you know, what's different about that. That's kind of a, a very quick overview of what a normal cycle looks like. And we just go ahead, I'm going to go to the results here. You can see those here. You see there's very, not very many younger women here, but, you know, the ones interested here, you know, 46 to, you know, some, quite a few, a third of you are more than, more than 60 years old. All right, and there's like one one guy here besides me. That'd be you, Paul. That's me. That's you. Okay. So really, it's true. There's a bunch of women on, on the call here, and we're talking to you. So what really happens here? You've all been through that normal part. What happens here through the cycles here, in what you call an ovulatory cycle? What happens is that corpus luteum doesn't develop. If I just go back to the cycle, this slide here. We're getting ovulation. If ovulation doesn't occur, right, if this estrogen level doesn't go up, then you don't get ovulation, and then you don't get ovulation, you don't get any production of the progesterone because that corpus luteum isn't developed. So you're getting a, a monthly cycle, but you're not getting any, any progesterone produced. So you have estrogen dominance or you have progesterone deficiency. You have a little of both, really. You don't have as much estrogen as, as you used to have. And you hardly have any progesterone at all. So that's one thing that, that happens. That can happen in the late 30s, early 40s even. It can happen even later than that. Along with it, you know, our health starts to fall apart. You know, our diet and lifestyle tends to catch up with us. And you have increased responsibilities and stresses. All these things kind of come as a storm together. And you're kind of wondering, what happened? What happened? This is not working. This doesn't feel normal the way it used to. And then you have other things along with there as well. You have you have estrogenic compounds from the environment that come in. And you have other chemicals in the womb, you know, things that you can't really control. And there you have estrogen ex exposures, you know, the BPA stuff. That has de developmental effects. Long time before you could do anything about it. Yeah, and people are, are sensitive to electromagnetic effects as well. And there's probably a lot of other factors that come in and complicate things. They say even, you know, your husband complicates things sometimes. So it's, it, it does get complicated, and you're trying to manage this, this delicate balance of hormones. And the top's kind of like a spinning top, and it starts to wobble. So what to do about it? Well, out of every crisis, there is an opportunity. So that's a crisis that... You can address and you can just shrivel up and kind of see I can't overcome, it's just too much. But that doesn't last very long. You have to look at it and say, okay, this is an opportunity. This change in life that's come upon me, you know, I'm not handling it very well right now, but there's an opportunity to rise up and overcome it. And we like to quote Romans 8.28, you know, all things work together for good. That good is to make us like Christ, that we'd be conformed to the image of his Son, as it says. And yet, it not always feels good. It doesn't always feel good. But there's an opportunity there. And there is a way to abundant living. And hopefully what it, the answers I'm sharing with you tonight will be part of that here. So embrace the change and say, okay, how can I make the best of this? There's some foundational truths that you just really can't get around very well. You know, it really does start with the foundation. You have to start with a highly raw plant-based whole food diet. And I put at least 9 to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. When I did a survey of, of health ministers that were eating the Halia diet, they averaged 18 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, about 10 servings of vegetables, 
and ate a fruit a day. So that's a lot. You know, 9 to 10 is very conservative there. And then you're going to put a lot of leafy greens, salads, cooked vegetables. That just means you've got three or four servings of vegetables every meal. Every time you're eating, you've got vegetables and fruits in there. So you have to think that that, that is the foundation of my diet. And I'm not going to eat anything if it doesn't have some kind of vegetables in it. So you have to get away from the refined stuff. You know, the white flour, the white sugar, and really almost all the sugar, right? It's going to be a lot less. The refined oils, even some of those coconut oils and stuff, as good as they are, you know, you can't use a lot of those necessarily. All right, if you're sensitive to grain, not as much grain. Stress reduction, sometimes you can't reduce the stress, but you need to really take it to God and help him manage the stress that you have. You know, in your 40s, I'm 46 now. My wife is 47. Exercise isn't such an option as it used to be. You, you know, deconditioning happens a lot easier. And you've all of you probably experienced that some. It's just not as easy to get up and go and, and you know, recover from exercise either. So you really need that to stay on top of your game. You have to have that exercise to feel well. And that's going to help with the hormone balance as well. So you get those foundational truths. And you get those together there. But when you have that, you find out, well, I don't need as many supplements. You know, I need a couple here, but I don't need near as many as I'm as someone's telling me I need. You need some iodine, okay, because that's used by all the glands in the body, everywhere from the, the tear glands, salivary glands. Uh, the breast tissue has a lot of iodine in it. It's necessary for normal structure of the breast. The breast tissue, if it doesn't have it, it's likely to get fibrocystic breast, and that can also lead to breast cancer. So iodine is very important for a woman. Ovaries have quite a bit of iodine in them. And the thyroid, of course, isn't going to function right with iodine. The thyroid's off, then, you know, energy levels are going to be off. You're not going to have the energy that you need. In addition to that, you can use some, some adaptogenic herbs that help bring you into balance, some vitamins to help support where you may be lacking. But it's not going to be a whole lot of stuff, necessarily. There's some things, you know, you might need some vitamin D along the way, some fish oil. You know, but it's not, it's not a lot of supplements when you have a good, strong foundation. Along the way, we said, okay, so we're doing all those foundational things right. And, and people were telling Anne, other women said, what can I do? And Anne Malcolm was herself saying, you know, I, I could use a little more, more help here. And she started looking around saying, you know, what can we do that would, that would help us with this? Because we have this foundation right, and it's still not enough. So we looked at it and said, well, okay, we're going to put together some adaptogenic herbs, put those together in a supplement, and, you know, a little bit of vitamin and mineral with that. I'm very judiciously selected and see what happens. But without just throwing it on the market here, let's give you another question here. Now, some of you may have seen this luminology supplement. Maybe some of you haven't before. Let's get an idea. Have, have you seen this or used luminology before? It looks like a, a great majority here of you are, are new to this product. Haven't used it, have heard about it maybe. And then... Mike, Michael, can you explain what an adapt adaptogenic herb is? Sure. Adaptogenic is a little bit like it sounds. It, it helps you adapt. So it's normalizing. It's going to bring you back to normal. So if your, your hormones are swung out one way, it brings you back towards normal. If they're swung out the other way, then it brings you back the other way. So if you're if you're a luteinizing hormone, or be more like the, the follicle stimulating hormone for postmenopausal women. If it's too high, it tends to bring it back to normal levels. And it's going to help you cope as well. It helps with the stress that you have as well. It helps you handle stress. That's what I mean by an, an adaptogenic herb. It helps you adapt to the circumstances you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. So most of you really haven't used this. We have another question for you then. If you haven't used it, you know, why not? That's a few different questions. If you have other reasons there, you can just put an answer back in the chat box. It won't show up here, but that gives you a, a chance to give an answer that, you know, that's not one of those at all. I don't know if those... If those um, Results pop right up to you or not after you fill them in or not here. 
So I see I see him clicking up here. Mm-hmm. So and as so as you know. mentioned, well as you mentioned, Owen, you know Anne's um, issue um, was she she was on a great diet, but she was still having um, hot flashes and having a difficult time sleeping, um, which is kind of why we we started the pursuit um, of, of trying to find a product that um, that you and um, Owen Idol kind of helped to develop. Yeah, and a little bit further of Angela, my wife. But, you know, night sweats and insomnia, those start showing up for her. And mm-hmm. so, hey, got a solution just in time for that. And it did help. And it still helps. So, you know, almost half of you haven't really heard of this before. So let me introduce you to that a little bit more. You know, this is one answer. It may not be the only answer. And some of you said, well, I've just used other supplements as well. And there's there's other reasons to not use it. I couldn't think of all of them. So if we look forward, what what we are trying to do is give you something that helps support the self-healing wisdom that that God put in your body. Not just applying hormones. It's not it's not a supplement that has hormones in it. It's the idea is to get under the body and support it at a foundational level that would help your body balance itself. That's that even after gen, adaptogenic herb. So your body would actually make the hormones, and it would kind of fit. You know, it's not going to adapt the same way for a premenopausal woman as a postmenopausal woman. And someone right in the middle there, that perimenopausal stage, you know, you need a little bit of different help there. But the maca that's in here does does that for you. So before we put it on the market, we wanted to find out, well, how well does this work? So we did an eight-week study to start with it. We just started the capsule a day, worked up to about nine a day. So let's see how far you had to go with that, and just got weekly surveys. We had about 50 women that consented to it, 51, and data back from 44 women. What happened to the other was necessarily, but, you know, a bunch of women from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So... Some people had side effects. Headaches were the most common complaint, really, from that, or some symptoms that they had just seemed to get more intense than than previously. But overall here, and I'll I'll break it down in the next couple of slides for individual results here, but overall you get 64% of the women saw positive benefits, and depending on where you were in stage of life, some were better, some were not as good. It didn't work quite as well for the, the late menopausal women. Some of that may not be just because the, the supplement doesn't work as well. It just just could be that our overall health isn't as good as we get older as well. And so that foundation has to be even stronger there. And of those women between the ages of 46 and 52, right in that perimenopausal stage there, we had very good results. It says 11 of 13. And actually one of those other ones was lost to follow. We didn't get a response back from her. So it's 11 of 12 that we got responses from had really good results. So if we look at the different individual symptoms that we're looking at, anything from vaginal dryness, you know, if I have a pointer here, and you can see my pointer here. In this age group, the 46 to 52, we have four or five for there. The low basal body temperature, thinning hair on the head, thinner dry skin, that is kind of a thyroid issue. And this isn't necessarily addressing that directly, so the results aren't necessarily as good on that. But hot flashes, night sweats, I mean, that, that, you know, across the board, you have pretty good results with that. Foggy thinking, memory problems, you know, very good results there too. Insomnia, okay, premenopausal women, very good there. You know, age, this age group, 46 to 52, just phenomenal results with that. Again, things, you know, some of the emotional sides as well. You know, great improvement there as well. So overall here, you know, that's the first slide. Here's another set of symptoms here as well. Uh, low sex drive, libido improved, quite not as much in the in the late postmenopausal women. Again, that may just be you know circumstance of life as well. You know, general overall health. Uh, Fibrocystic breast, you have some improvement there as well. Intolerance to exercise and fatigue. You know, these are some of the symptoms that you may not realize that they're related to hormone balance, but indeed they, they really can be. If we get the hormones balanced right, you know, you get some great improvement there too. Red flush on the face, you know, that was especially, uh, you saw a lot of good improvement in the premenopausal women. Migraine headaches. 
Yeah, good improvement there too. <clears throat> that really isn't always that those are a hormone issue. But you figure it out when it comes around every month about the same time. You get an idea. But even later on, those headaches are related to hormone balance. And supporting the body, not just adding more progesterone cream necessarily, but supporting it at a deeper level with this supplement got better results with that. So another question here. If you have used the Luminology, you know, mark the best response here. You know, a lot of you haven't used it, but just get an idea. You don't have time for a testimony from all of you. But, you know, for those that have used it, you know, give us a good idea. Okay, we get some people saying there's, you know, half saying no change, some say a positive change. Mixed results. So go ahead, you can still fill those in there. So you get some, it varies a little bit here. Right? And some of you, it says, we have 11, about 20 responses here. About half of you said there's mixed results. You know, it's good, but it wasn't enough all by itself. I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer. You can fill out more of those results there. So, you know, that the results may vary here. It may vary with, you know, what your baseline health is like, even without that without the hormone balance. External factors, stress factors coming in. You know, you're not just dealing with little children. You know, teenagers, I have teenagers at home. You know, that's a whole different dynamic that you have. Or you have an empty nest, and that's a whole other different dynamic. And you have grandchildren. You know, that, that gives you a whole other perspective as well. So if you move along here, we we'll talk a little bit about the luminology and how it works. These are the main ingredients here. It has a maca extract, vitex berry, diendol methane, uh, phytosterols, some B6, and zinc in it. And that's essentially what it is. The maca helps balance the endocrine system with the hormones, balancing hormones. That's the main adaptogen in there. The vitex berry is adaptogenic. It also helps support progesterone levels. Right, and for premenopausal women and perimenopausal women, it's especially helpful because it tends to normalize that level of uh, the length of the cycle. So if it's really too long, it helps to bring it back closer to 30 days. If it's too short, you know, 24, 22 days, it helps bring it back to 28 days. It's not perfect, but it does help. The, the indole methane, that helps improve estrogen metabolism. I'll talk about that on another slide here. The phytosterols, phytosterols, they're a hormone precursor. The vitamin B6 helps with inflammation. And zinc, sometimes you're just low in it as well. Let's take a picture, give you an idea of what maca looks like in the ground. It's grown in Peru, way up in the, in the highlands. It looks a little bit like a radish. It's actually a member of the cruciferous vegetable family. Yeah, it's a cruciferous vegetable. People eat it as a vegetable up in maca, up in Peru. Excuse me. So it's about the size of your, you know, in the palm of your hand, you can see different pictures there. Here's one here, you know, just a, that's a small one, I think, but kind of like a radish. Grows way up here, the field where it's growing here, all this green stuff here, that's the maca growing, and nothing else grows up there. It's way, very high elevation here. Nothing else really grows up there. And so it has some, you know, if you grow the same maca down at sea level, you don't get the same results because it, develops those adaptogenic compounds in the maca itself way high high elevation just for its own survival there. That's what it looks like. It's traditionally used for stamina and increased fertility at high altitudes and kind of as a Peruvian ginseng of sorts. And we talked about the adaptogenic effect there already. It's been shown in clinical studies that it does help reduce hot flashes and night and night sweats. The DIM, it increases the 2-hydroxyl form of estrogen compounds rather than, rather than the 16-hydroxyl forms. And that will, is associated with a lower risk of breast cancer. It also binds to the sex hormone binding globulin. And what it will actually do is increase the level of free testosterone. 
It's not the total testosterone in your body that makes a difference. It's the free testosterone. And no, you don't have as much as men do, but you do have a little bit. And that little bit's important. So that DIM can help block some of those, those binding sites to give you a little bit higher level of free testosterone. There's a lot of DIM on the market, but the one we have is micro-encapsulated, the bioresponse DIM, and that helps you absorb it a lot better. If it's not micro-encapsulated, you're really not going to get much out of it. Now, the Vitex, or the Chase Berry, that does help support progesterone levels. As I said, it helps with cyclical nostalgia, and in some cases with young women, it may also increase fertility. All right, so if you're wanting to get pregnant, it's actually very helpful. If you're wanting to get, not wanting to get pregnant, it's something to be aware of. And just take precautions. The phytosterols are active ingredients. You know, things in soft palmetto berries, pygium africanus bark, stinging nettles, you find those frequently in what they call women's supplements or hormone balancing supplements. One of the active ingredients in there is the, the phytosterols in there because that helps make the pregnenolone. And that goes on to make the DHEA or progesterone. Those are some of the precursors that you have for other, for other compounds, for other hormones in your body. Along with it, there's some zinc in there. Because that excess estrogen will help deplete zinc. In some cases, like if you're having too many estrogens from the environment, not just your own production, but estrogenic effects. You're kind of swimming in a sea of estrogen sometimes, it seems. And the zinc is depleted. And so it's good to, to have a little bit extra in there. Also, we have added in some, some vitamin B6. On the younger women, B6 does help with PMS symptoms. Oral contraceptives actually deplete B6, so that women on oral contraceptives are actually usually deficient in, in vitamin B6. They don't necessarily tell you that, but that's one of the side effects. Even if you're using those just to regulate your cycle, they do deplete the vitamin B6. So this is added in to give you extra of that. And it actually is a pretty good antioxidant as well for lipid oxidation. It helps prevent some of those those um, ages that we talk about that that come along from, from lipid oxidation. Now, some of you filled out here with, you know, is luminology enough by itself? It's not always a one-size-fits-all solution. And my wife actually uses a progesterone cream as well. She uses, uses the luminology for that foundational support, but also some progesterone cream about half of the month. And together, I think that the effect is better than either one of them by themselves. There may be other things you're low on. Magnesium may be low. You might need to increase your intake of magnesium. You know, dark leafy green vegetables, that's a really good source of magnesium. There may be a supplement you might want to help with that. If you're feeling really crampy, tight, Anything that's strained and sore, the magnesium helps helps as a what they call a, a relaxing mineral. Helps a lot of things relax a lot better. So that may be something you're missing. If you're going you're doing, you know, a really good diet, you're watching the sugar especially, and you know, you've tried these luminology and it's not working all in it by itself. You're using luminology and progesterone cream and it still doesn't seem to be right. You know, there is a place for bioidentical hormone replacement. You know, that's an option. It's more costly. You, you wish you wouldn't need to do that, and we haven't done that either. We're just hoping that this is enough, and usually it is. And pretty good results with the, with the luminology and progesterone cream coupled together there. So that's worked for my wife, and I don't know if it will work for you, but it may not work for you. You may, you may just want to figure out what's going on in your body. You find a... Uh, doctor that can help you with that, that's knowledgeable, and that would work pretty well there. So if I want to summarize this up here, you know, each season of life, whether, you know, earlier in your life has challenges, but there's blessings in it. There's blessings in the change of life as well. You know, you're moving away from so much child rearing to other things, to other things that God is calling you to. It is possible to balance our hormones. It, it can be done. It's a little bit tricky sometimes, but it really can be done to support the body there. Start with a good foundation and work from there. As I've shown you, the luminology really does work. It's helped the majority of women who've tried it to improve menopausal symptoms. It may not be enough in every case, but you have to start with some of the basics there. And as it says in, in Psalm 30, 
you know, it says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning there. And that's, in the psalm, it talks about God bringing healing to you. And that's really what we're about at the Haliodite. We want to be part of that. Right, and I want to read some of the psalm to you from Psalm 30. Give me a couple minutes here. It says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave, and you kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. And that's what we want to part, be a part of for you. We want to be a part of that healing that you're looking for, that things aren't right. You're kind of out of kilter. You're looking for that, that help there. Right? Uh, verse 5, it says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life, or for lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And you cry out to God. It says, you know, you know, if I cry out to you, O Lord, it says, verse 9, What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. And that may be where you are tonight. But then the conclusion of the psalm is really good. It says, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. We want to be part of that for you, to help you find that healing, to really figure out the why in your life, be able to complete it, the things that God has called you to, that you would have the strength and the health, the physical health, to be able to complete what he's calling you to. And really, that's our mission. It's not just about selling a supplement for you, but some of these supplements really do help, so we offer them to you. And we encourage you, we urge you to really take a look at this. You know, get that strong foundation of a diet. Go forward and find that healing so that you can give thanks and praise to God. To help you with that, we do have a sale. There's a promo cord here, MyLoom20 there. Get there it's for a limited time, but 20% off to have a chance to try out this supplement. All right, use that in combination with the best diet that you can right now. So that's what I have for the presentation part. I think we have some well, time thanks, for Q&A now, Paul. We sure do, Michael, and thanks so much for the information and, and for sharing. And it's actually been um, quite interesting seeing the response from um, the, the women who have tried the Luminology product. And um, so many of them have written in and said how it changed their life. So... We really appreciate the work you did in formulating that. You know, as the um, whole hormone issue becomes one that's that's quite frustrating, and there's so much different information out there. And one of the first questions that came up was about bioidentical hormones, and you know, just your thoughts on that, and whether a general doctor should do it, you know, a gynecologist, or whether it should be a naturopathic doctor. Um, you have any insights on the bioidentical hormone topic? My thoughts are to find a doctor that really knows what he's doing and that his patients are happy with him as well. You need a system where you get feedback not just on the doctor but his patients as well. So, so find someone you know, by word of mouth, that's probably the best way to find someone that is really helping patients. And it may be a naturopath who's done some studies, some research on that. It may be a general doctor. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's going to vary from... It's not a certain specialty, I don't think, that, that really gets it. It's an individual right. doctor that really gets it. So the kind of the thought process that, that I've heard Anne as she's counseling women, um, she talks about trying to balance the hormones through, like, luminology and, and diet. Um, she's really noted that sugar plays a significant role in her um, hormonal um, Impact. So if she if she has sugar, she can almost tell immediately, um, either in the, the difficult sleeping at night or the hot flash or just even mood, um, that there's an alteration. Even the natural sugars. So it's not just refined sugars. Um, and so she, you know she's found a real connection there. But what she works with people is to get them to um, try to balance their hormones before they go down the uh, bioidentical route. But one of the things she's really learned is that the testing needs to be done for um, estrogens to make sure that 
it's not pushing things out of place and to find a doctor that really knows how to do hormone testing and then to have testing done at least once a year to make sure that the estrogen levels haven't gotten out of control with the um, with the bioidenticals. Right, because you're going to supplement with specific estrogens and progesterone at a certain time of the month as well because you're trying to mimic that normal cycle. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, somebody asked about treating um, fibroids naturally. Well, we don't really treat anything in a sense. How do you deal with them? That, yeah, I'm, I'm not a doctor on that one, so I'm not sure I could really answer how to treat them exactly. Iodine does help a lot with that, and the body helps take care of, of fibroids, often with the, with the iodine supplementation and balancing hormones mm-hmm. overall. And Anne's had a, a lot of experience with that as well, and she found that um, iodine made a huge difference. Um, and, and actually, you know, she was real, quite concerned at one point, and she hadn't been taking iodine, and she started taking it again, and they just cleared up. So there was a, a direct correlation for um, that with Anne as she went through the different different situations. Um, yeah, and I, I would include that for women. This is the iodine. It's just it is a key supplement. You're not going to get that the level that you need, you know, in hundreds of microgram quantities, at least you know, close to milligram, maybe three milligrams a day. You won't find that in any any food. Mm-hmm. We just don't have that in our food anymore. Um, we had one guest. Uh, she's 53, still cycling, but didn't get much relief from taking four luminology a day. Um, not sure how long she was taking it. Any thoughts? So no symptoms were clearing up. Yeah, that's not didn't get much relief. Is is the comment here? Might need. To, I hesitate just to say, okay, just try progesterone cream with that. That might help, but there might be further issues in there as well. General health issues. I mean, candida can be a, a, a strong player in that as well. So without knowing more about the, the specific case, it's hard to say exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody who's 37, almost 38, asks, um, I've had problems in the past which are much better now. Some might think I'm heading into early menopause. I would still like to have children if I use the products um, which are for per, uh, premenopausal or menopausal, will that catapult me into menopause? No, it won't. It'll actually probably help balance your hormones right where you are. You know, between the Vitex and the, and the Maca, you'll find that those help bring you into balance for a woman that's 37. Right? And like the Vitex berry in that case would be very good assistance for you. So no, it doesn't throw you into menopause at all. It's not like that. Okay. And, you know, on the product it says um, to stay off it a week after taking it for three or four months. Why, why does it say that? The body tends to get less sensitive to the same things that you give it all the time especially hormonally. So you give it a little bit of a break there to help reset. And so the the adaptogenic has a better effect after it hasn't been as as exposed to continually for a long period of time. So Mm -hmm. it's just a good idea to to fast from it just a little bit. You know, if somebody was using um, progesterone cream, would they stop using it if they started taking luminology? You might try that. They, they work well together, but you may see if, if the luminology by itself is enough to, to do what the progesterone cream was doing. So that, you know, you might have to try it for a couple months one way and try it a couple months the other way. You know, with just the luminology or just the luminology with the progesterone and just see how it goes. 
it can take three months really to get full effects of this as well. I mean, we, we looked at eight weeks, so that's just, you know, two months. But for a, a premenopausal woman, it can take two or three cycles for things to really line out, even using this, because the body, it's, you're working with it. It's not a hammer. It's just a gentle nudge. So, um, a couple questions here. What are the differences between the balance breeze and clarity with the ingredients all the same? Do you, do you want to address that? It's so you're, you're taking one that's that's really for who you are. The ingredients, so you may think it was, well, it's the same, but it's not going to work the same in who you are. So a premenopausal woman, you're taking Vitex berry, Vitex and uh, maca. It's not going to have the same effect for you as it does for a postmenopausal woman. So that's really the difference is that the labeling is for you, but that the ingredients. Because the ingredients have different effects in different women, different ages, ages of women. That and sense? that really comes back to that comes back to that adaptogen, adaptogenic herb, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I don't want to take something for postmenopausal women if I'm premenopausal. I want the one that's for me. Somebody asks about. Um, maca, is there a concern for an increased risk in breast cancer with maca? It doesn't have estrogenic effect, so no, there's no concerns like, like if you're if someone's taking tamoxifen or something like that, that it would interact with that. It really isn't. I think some doctors have looked at that. I'm trying to remember right, there was a, I believe there was, a, it didn't have an effect on that as far as as far as risk for breast cancer okay and if uh, somebody's had a full hysterectomy would there be any benefit in that or would the product be helpful it might be there it's probably needs some other hormonal effects though because you're missing a lot at that point mm -hmm. Depends if it was a, a total in it, like all the ovaries are gone, if there's some ovarian function still or not. But if there's no ovarian function left, then this may not be enough. And, and from some of the um, research that you showed from the test you did, um, it looked like that um, there was greater benefit for women under 52. If somebody's over that age, um, would you still recommend it or? Um, what, what's the odds of it helping in that over 52 category? I think it still helps balance hormones in the older women. I think just general health overall is a harder issue to deal with as older. So if you're older and in generally very good health and you're following a, a good diet, that this is going to have more effects for you than someone that was in poor health over the age of 52. It's going to be harder, you know, if you don't have a strong foundation. And I don't have all the details in front of me of, you know, ages and body weight and you know, percent fat and so on on these women to see if, you know, and conditioning and things like that, to see if they were really healthy or if they weren't. So I think it will have an effect, but it, the foundation is more critical as you get older. Mm hmm if, if somebody was taking the um, Halley diet B12, B6 folate, um, and they were taking the luminology, which has some B6 in there. Is there too much B6? There isn't. You're still within the range of, of what would be acceptable and not hazardous at all. And would luminology help with heavy periods? It tends to. The, the heavy periods come from too much estrogen building up because that's as the follicle is is developing, it calls out more estrogen. And if you don't have the ovulation there to balance that with the progesterone, then you're not going to have that that progesterone that inhibits it from going and and giving you too much buildup from estrogens. Mm -hmm. That can balance that. Um, now, my wife has found that to really deal with that, it works better with the luminology and progesterone cream both to to really deal with that well. 
we've had a lot of questions related to the to the iodine um, one, and we probably want to do an, maybe an iodine thyroid webinar here in the near future um, based on a lot of these questions. Um, but somebody did ask, just for clarification, do you recommend iodine with luminology? Yeah, yes, this doesn't, this doesn't take the place of iodine at all. So you just, you just need iodine anyways for your whole body. All the glands in the body need iodine. It helps with the, the thyroid especially, and then, and then help balance out hormones just as, a, as part of that strong foundation. But if you just use luminology without iodine, you won't get the same effects either. Right. And um, where does cortisol fit into the hormone balancing and luminology discussion? If the cortisol is going to be more of the stress response and that has a, a cyclical effect, you know, a daily effect as well, where it rises and it should fall at night and help you sleep, you know, and then it starts to wake you up in the morning. So that cycle can be off. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you stay awake late at night and then you don't wake up in the morning. I don't know how much of an effect this has on that. I think it has a little bit of a normalizing effect, but I'm not, I'm not certain on that one. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of um, specific questions about um, people's specific health issues, and what we can do is maybe try to get our customer service reps to to come back and and work with you individually. Um, but I think we've covered most of the general questions. Um, and you know, Dr. Donaldson um, is a PhD. He's not a medical doctor, so we really can't um, diagnose, prescribe. Um, so, but we'll see if we can help you through the through the other elements. Um, but we do have uh, three lucky winners. Uh, we have Connie Moore, Robinson, and Stephanie Carter. Um, each of you will receive a three-month supply of luminology, and our customer service reps will be reaching out to you in the, the next couple days to, um, to get your products and to, and to get you set up with that. So thank you, everyone, for, for joining us this evening. Um, Dr. Donaldson, thank you for the great information and answering all the questions. Um, there were um, almost 45 questions out there, so a lot, a lot of questions um, that that people had. And it's an important topic that really impacts people's lives in many different ways. So thank you again, Dr. Donaldson, for being with us um, and for sharing. And we look forward to being back with you next month for another exciting topic um, as the Howie Diet presents these webinars. Until then, um, thank you and uh, God bless. Good night. Good night, y'all. Thanks for listening.